everyone, in this episode of Under the Radar, we are talking about the Ball Official Railroad Standard Train Master wristwatches. Very cool, interesting watches with a very rich history. So I want to talk about the history kind of behind the Ball Company, um, just in general, to kind of give you a better idea of, of why these watches are actually important. Um, in 1981, the Ball Watch Company was founded by Webb C. Ball in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, so before the development of just trains and, and railroads kind of spanning across the United States, uh, there was no real urgent need for a standardization of time. Um, and, and what's kind of crazy is uh, most towns and regions kept their own approximate time based on their location and the position of the sun in the sky. So there is no like, uh, you know, it's, it's five o'clock here, which means it's, you know, four o'clock there or seven o'clock here. It was just kind of like their guess. Um, and it, it was super regional. Um, so as railroads started to connect everything and without this standardized time, it started to cause a lot of issues for the railroads because conductors didn't have you know accurate watches on their wrist because they're set to the last location they're in without a standardized set of time zones and you know what the minutes were in any given place um, and this kind of had some gruesome outcomes as a lot of train collisions started to happen due to this lack of standardization in order to make the train systems uh, safer for both travelers and the people operating these trains, uh, Webb C. Hall designed the Chief Time Inspector, um, which went into the standardization of time across America and just in general. But more importantly, um, Ball's criteria for the accuracy and reliability were extremely strict and inspired others like the Swiss Official Testing Institute, or COSC, uh, Web C Ball also set up the railroad standard to ensure accuracy and safety to all railroad employees. Um, so not only did this save a lot of lives, just the Ball Company and Ball Railroad watches, um, it also went into inspire the testing and sort of the standardization of modern timekeeping that we see today uh, for Swiss watches and, and the Swiss watchmaking houses that submit their movements to COSC to be officially certified. Um, so it, I just think that the history behind these ball watches is, is absolutely incredible um, and has a, a deep history with not only American watches and, and American history, but all watches just in general. Um, but after that little history lesson, I kind of want to talk about the watches themselves more specifically. Um, I have this one here. It's a stainless steel case, automatic movement, um, and all ball watches kind of have the same theme. You know, the, the white dial, the, the very high contrast black Arabic numerals, and a, a red sweep seconds hand. And it just kind of creates a very sharp and uh, pleasing to the eye sort of appearance um, and they're not overly large watches but they are not incredibly small either they're kind of in the sweet spot of wearability um, to where you could wear it as a, a slightly more dressy or more professional watch but you could wear it a little bit more casually too um, kind of depending on the strap that you put on it I think uh, so they're very universal in terms of like how you're able to wear them and uh, just the sort of engineering that goes behind them is, you know, pretty incredible just for how accurate they are, actually. Um, these watches are, are pretty inexpensive, actually. Um, I don't necessarily see them, like, raising in value, like, insanely, just because there's a good amount of them out there. They did make a lot of these watches, but I think with uh, the amount of history that's behind them, for any sort of collector, it could be a, a really fun watch to wear, just like as an everyday wearer, um, a daily driver. Uh, but personally, the de designs to me are, are, are really impressive and, and very simple and just very attractive. Um, I like the high contrast. I like the you know ease of legibility. Um, and 
This stainless steel one I have on my wrist is, is just in really nice condition. Like you can find most of these uh, because you know they weren't um, polished too often or, or you can find them in really good condition for, for a very affordable price. The second one I want to talk about is actually a gold cap version and it's going to be a little bit different. So whereas the stainless steel version that I had on my wrist prior was kind of more of like a tanu case shape with sort of like the sunburst brushing, um, the one I have on my wrist now is actually a 10 karat gold filled, um, which definitely does sort of dress the watch up a little bit. Even though it has that sort of high contrast, uh, very legible, high visibility dial design, um, in the gold, I think it kind of accents the the dial and, and the hands very nicely. Uh, so they're very universal in terms of like how you're able to wear them and uh, just the sort of engineering that goes behind them is you know pretty incredible just for how accurate they are actually. And with that, I wanna say thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content just like this. Follow us on Instagram at Craft and Tailored. And if you have watch questions, we are here to help. You can email us directly at info at craftandtailor.com. We'll see you in the next one.